I'd like to welcome each one of you to our devotional study today. I invite you to take your Bible, come with me if you would, to Exodus chapter 40. Exodus chapter 40 in your Bibles today. And uh, we're going to notice in the first 16 verses of this chapter, the children of Israel receive a command from God to set up the tabernacle. And uh, let's actually just read the first eight verses, and we will begin looking at them today. We probably are not going to get through them all, but we will begin to look at them today and uh, glean what it is that God wants us to glean as we continue our study through the tabernacle and now the setting up of the tabernacle. So in Exodus chapter 40, and in verse 1, it says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, on the first day of the first month shalt thou set up the tabernacle of the tent of the congregation. And thou shalt put therein the ark of the testimony, and cover the ark with a veil, and thou shalt bring in the table, and set in order the things that are to be set in order upon it. And thou shalt bring in the candlestick, and light the lamps thereof. And thou shalt set the altar of gold for the incense before the ark of the testimony, and put the hanging of the door to the, ta to the tabernacle. And thou shalt set the altar of the burnt offering before the door of the tabernacle of the tent of the congregation. And thou shalt set the laver between the tent of the congregation and the altar, and shalt put water thereon. And thou shalt set up the court round about, and hang up the hanging at the court there, at the court gate. So as we look at this, um, we didn't read all the verses today, but I mentioned the first 16 verses are really God's command to set up the tabernacle. We didn't read all of them because of time, but I want you to notice how that portion where God commands Moses to set up the tabernacle, I want you to notice how that scripture is introduced and then how it closes. In verse six, uh, verse uh, 1, rather, it says, The Lord spake unto Moses, saying, and he gives him the instruction. Then notice what it says in verse 16. Thus did Moses, according to all that the Lord commanded him, so did Moses. He. So we see here Moses' obedience to the Lord. And I want you to note a couple of things about this obedience to the Lord uh, that we see here. First of all, it indicates that the obedience was immediate. When God instructed Moses on what he wanted Moses to do, Moses immediately sets about doing what it is that God wants him to do. And friends, that's where we need to be in our lives as well, to not only know what God says, but to do what God says. We mentioned it briefly in the last devotional, but the Bible there says in, in Matthew 28, 20, teaching them to observe all things. Notice it doesn't say teaching them to know all things. It says teaching them to observe all things. In other words, to be obedient to what it is that God has said to them. And we see here that Moses' obedience is immediately but then also notice that Moses' obedience is completely. It says in verse 16, Thus did Moses according to all that the Lord commanded him. He just didn't do some of what God told him to do. He did all of what God told him to do. And friends, what lessons we can learn from this simple act of obedience by Moses. So we see here uh, in verses 1 through 8, the directions that God gives Moses for the setup, and then in verses 9 through 16, we're going to see them actually do the setup. So we see the timing of it, first of all, in verse 2. It says, On the first day of the first month shalt thou set up the tabernacle of the tent of the congregation. So, as you study through this, you will see that approximately six months has passed from the time that Moses received God's complete instruction concerning the construction of the tabernacle until it was set up. So, so Moses gets the instructions from God. Come back to Exodus chapter 19. In Exodus chapter 19, and in verse 1, it says this, in the third month, when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, the same month came they into the wilderness of Sinai. So we see that they came into the wilderness in the third month. Then come to Exodus chapter 24. Exodus chapter 24, we're going to pick it up in verse 18. It says, And Moses went into the midst of the cloud and gagged him up into the cloud. And Moses was in the mount 40 days and 40 nights. So here we see Moses in the mountain with God 40 days and 40 nights as God is revealing this stuff to him. 
Now, in Exodus chapter 34, and in verse 28, it says, He was there with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights. He did eat, neither eat bread nor drink water. So we see that during those 40 days and 40 nights that he fasted. And then it says, And he wrote upon the tables the words of the commandment, the Ten Commandments. And now, as we come to Exodus chapter 40, and in verse 17, we're just trying to establish a bit of a timeline here. It says, It came to pass in the first month, in the second year, on the first day of the month, that the tabernacle was reared up. So there was about six months involved in doing what it is, uh, building all of this. And, and it's just a reminder to us, that friends, that, that even when the work of the Lord takes diligence and takes time, that we are faithful in doing what it is that God has called us to do. Then we see the ark set in place in verse 3. It says, And thou shalt put therein the ark of the testimony and cover the ark with a veil. Now, it's interesting here. Like it talks about covering the ark with a veil. And uh, as we think about that, that is a symbol of God's presence. Come back to Exodus chapter 25. The veil is a symbol of God's presence. Saying, oh, friends, how we need the presence of God in our lives. It says in Exodus 25, 22, And there will I meet with thee, and I will commune with thee from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubims, which are upon the ark of the testimony of all things, which I give thee in commandment unto the children of Israel. So we know that all of that took place behind a veil, and that veil is a symbol of God's presence. But it's also a statement of God's precepts. It reminds us that we are to be obedient to the to the word of God, that we are to do what it is that God says in his word. We see that in Exodus 25 and in verse 16, thou shalt put into the ark of the testimony which I shall give thee. And we know that what goes into that ark is the Ten Commandments that Moses broke, the, the broken tablets went into that ark. And, and there's where God's precepts were, God's law, the reminder of what it was that God had commanded them. And it says in verse 22 of Exodus 25, And there will I meet with thee, and I will commune with thee from above the mercy seat. So there's his presence from between the two cherubims, which are set upon the ark of the testimony of all things which I give thee in commandment unto the children of Israel. So we see there that this is also, this ark is not only a symbol of God's presence, but friends, it's a statement of God's precepts. It's a reminder to us of what God has instructed us in his word. But it's also a reminder of the secrecy of God's person. He said, cover the ark with a veil. You say, well, what's the, what's the significance of that? Well, let me give you a couple of verses and then we'll explain them. Deuteronomy chapter 29 and verse 29 say, The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. So the secret things belong unto the Lord our God. But he does choose to reveal some of those things to us. And then in Hebrews chapter 6, we find this instruction in Hebrews chapter 6, beginning to read in verse 17. Hebrews 6, verse 17, wherein God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have fled for a refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entereth into that within the veil, whether the forerunner is for us entered, even Jesus making high priest forever, after the order of Melchizedek. So there we see this whole idea of entering into the veil, and there we are revealed some of the deep things of God. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 19 and 20 uh, say there, Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. So only the child of God can truly understand God in his fullness. In 2 Corinthians 5, 19, it says, To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath commanded unto them, unto us, the word of reconciliation. So it's our responsibility to share God with the world. But let me say this. If you really want to truly know God, then you need to 
enter in, you need to walk in fellowship with him and be obedient unto him, drawing eye to God, and he will draw an eye to you, as it says in <clears throat> James chapter 4 and verse 8. Have a good day.